and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's episode we are going to build unit tests in our AWS Lambda that we have created before. So if you're interested in watching more content like this, subscribe in the red button below to my channel. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started! <laughs> So a lot of you were wondering what are the inputs and outputs of Flex, how I can test that, how I can verify uh, I should deploy every time my Lambda to make sure it works, uh, should I put uh, console logs to see in my cloud uh, watch logs, so all these questions I think the answer is unit testing. So in today's video we are going to refactor our AWS Lambda that we built in the previous episode, so if you don't know what I'm talking about you can follow the playlist from the beginning uh, somewhere in the card in the top. And in this video we are going to refactor that code and create unit tests. This is not the optimal way to create unit tests, usually it's good to create the unit test when you build the code, but refactoring will help us to make this unit test make sense. I will be using Jest, a new like framework for doing unit tests. This are four, I was using Mocha, but Somebody recommended Jest and I wanted to try it. It works in the same way that Mocha, but it has very nice reporting. So you can also check that out in this video. The first thing we are going to do is going to refactor a little bit our code because our code is very messy, it's full of promises and callbacks in the same time. So we will refactor it to have only the callback in the handler because Lambda requires to have a callback, but inside our code we only will use promises. So that's the first refactoring we are going to do. And after that, we are going to create unit tests to validate what we have now. We are going to validate the fulfillment, we are going to validate the dialog code hooks, the initial message, when we have one slot, when we have two slots, when we have one invalid slot, and things like that. And we are creating unit tests for all those cases. Then we are going to refactor our code into something more readable because the code we have is a little bit messy and it's hard to follow things are everywhere and everything is messy in one big file, so we want to refactor that out. And we will make sure that with our unit test everything is working fine. And then we are going to hit deploy and we will be certain that our Lambda is still working. I imagine some of you will be wondering uh, why I will want to write unit tests. And my answer for that is every time you write some code, in this particular case, in order to verify it you need to deploy it to the cloud. Is that that's very slow. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. Wouldn't it be that much easier that you can try that code locally? And to try that code locally, unit test is the best. Why? Because you can write unit test and then as soon as you introduce new features, you can always make sure that the old features still work without going around and clicking around. So for this case, unit tests are very, very handy. And I would say in all the cases when you are building code, it's very, very handy to have unit tests. So if you're new to programming, you should go and learn some unit tests. It will help you a lot in the future of your career. And when writing unit tests to serverless, that's a little different approach. Whenever you're writing a unit test, one thing you want to do is that you make sure that you only test that class. And you want to abstract everything else out and then you want to write that class. And that's how I, I tested my, my serverless code in, in my work and production, um, my really important code. I usually create interfaces between, for example, my managed services like DynamoDB and make a mock of those interfaces and then I test the classes that I've written. So if I'm writing tests for our order coffee bot, I will create an interface for the database and I will mock that out and then I will only test the logic. In the case I'm writing unit tests now, I will just write unit tests using the managed services. If you want to know how to write really properly unit tests, I can make a video about that and we can have a deep in how I write my unit tests. But for now I want just to give you an idea of the inputs and outputs and how to keep your code in shape. This won't be exactly what I will be doing at work or in a real production code. I will put a little bit more effort in my unit test. It's a good start, but it's not the end. So if you want to know more, just 
leave it in the comment below and I will take your request as always and make a video out of it. So let's go to the code! The first thing we are going to do is to install Chest. Chest, as I said, is our test framework that we need to install so it appears in our package JSON and we can start using it. As always, npm install Chest does, does save dev so it saves the developer uh, dependency and it goes after it's installed next we are going to modify our test script and we are going to put test and we will export the region so it works with our DynamoDB table and then we are going to call chest and we are going to create a watch script that also will import the region and then it will do chest dash dash watch that that will call the watch uh, functionality in chest that is really cool and I will be using a lot because then the test gets run automatically whenever you made a change and save the file. Now we are going to create a new folder and we will call it test and there we are going to create a new file that we will call order coffee.spec.js and there we are just going to create one very stupid unit test to make sure that everything is configured right and now I will just write some gibberish there that is not calling anything, but we can verify that it's running. To run a test, we are going to go to our terminal and we're just going to write npm run test and then we run our tests calling jest. If you just run test, it will run it once and then it will exit again. If you write watch, it will stay in that loop forever until you get out from jest. So whenever you make a change to the file, it will refresh and it will run it again. So now let's go and refactor a little bit our code. The first thing I want to do, because it's very disturbing, is to remove all the callbacks that is around the code. Callbacks are needed because that's the way the handler and lambda works. We need to return a callback. But in the rest of our code we really don't need those callbacks, so I will just use promises. So we will start refactoring from the handler down to get rid of those callbacks. So now we are going to uh, return a callback whenever dispatch is done, so dispatch now will return a promise, not a callback. And then we go to dispatch and we change that it's not inputting a callback anymore, it's just the event. So now order drinks always needs to return a promise. So now we go to order coffee.js and we remove the callback from there and we remove the callbacks from there as well and we return remove the well we didn't remove it but we will remove it in a moment just cleaning all the returns so now here we need to remove that return and also return a promise not that's not returning a promise that's returning some delicit slots so we will need to create a new new promise there so that we'll need to return a promise I will have to remove the new in like two seconds, so don't get too attached to it because I just stopped it wrong. It's promise resolve, like I'm writing now. That's what you get when you do live coding. And now I remove the new. And the last one is already returning a promise because it's uh, returning from the fulfill, from the save. So now we can deploy it and this it should be working, so can verify that. But we don't want to verify like this every time we do changes to our code. We want to make sure that our code works without needing to deploy it. So for that we are going to uh, write unit tests. So we are going to create their order coffee and we are going to call it from there. The first one we are going to create is a unit test to test dialog hook with no slots. I will not go into the details of all these unit tests. The code will be in GitHub. So I will write the first and the second one with you and then the rest will go very fast and I will make some comments here and there but you can check this in very slow motion if you want to see exactly what I'm doing or then go and check the github with the code that is there ready for you. So the first thing we want to do as this is already working we want to refactor the code after this so now we are going to uh, to check in the logs the request that Lex makes to Lambda. So we are going to input that as our initial request in the test case and then we are going to verify that it replies with the intended response. 
So we will call order coffee and the request and then we are going to write then and then we are getting a response and that response we can just print it out in the console and we can check that it's right and we can make sure that everything is nice and working. So now we know as the response so we can put it there when we write the tests we can now have the expected response and we can verify so then when we refactor the code we know that this is the right response for this input so that's that and then we do an assert there that we verify the two responses and um, yeah good now we will add assert that is uh, the assertion library chai that is the Assertion library for this unit test, we need to add it to our npm development uh, dependencies. So we will do install in our package.json. <laughs> so then we can use and then we run npm watch and that should work. Yes, good. Now we have our first unit test. To do the rest of the unit test is similar pro process. We can go and check in the lex logs to get the initial intern request and then we can check what is the response and then we can uh, make sure that those match and that's that. So I will fast forward this, make it fast so you get the idea on how we do this. Now I have written test cases for the most important actions of our code. So the next thing we want to do is to uh, refactor this code because this code is everything is written in the orders coffee. All the business logic is there. So it's very hard sometimes to read or to understand what is what. So I want to extract information from there to different files. So then when we create more logic to our bot, it doesn't get everything mixed up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function that is to handle the dialog code hook. And I will extract that code from there. I will pass the intent request and then I will extract it out. And then we can call that instead of all that code. So now this is more visible. The code is becoming a little bit more readable. We can run our test and make sure that everything is there. Yes, everything still works. So now we can extract that next one that is the and I will removing console logs from our code. And now I will create a new uh, function, a new function that is uh, to handle the fulfillment. And I will do exactly the same. I put the intent request as a parameter, and then I will just put exactly what is in that if. And then I just call that. And now our main method looks much clearer and easier to read. And I can make sure that our tests are passing, but then the fulfillment is not passing. Why? Because I forgot to get that coffee type and coffee sizes. So now they pass. So it's pretty easy. As soon as you say, poof, they run. The next thing I want to do is to separate this into two files. I will create a new folder where I put all the code related to order coffee. And there I will move this file. And then I will change our test. So it's called the right file. And now we need to make sure that the references from that file are pointing to the right place. Good, everything works. Now, first I need to fix the dispatch with the right, so it points to the right folder, to the right file. And now I'm going to get all the methods that are related to dialog and put them in a new uh, file. So I will call it manage dialogues and I will put all the methods that are related to manage dialog from the order coffee there. So the validation, the building, the results, 
the handle the dialog code hook. So now all the code related to dialogues lives in the same file and it's very easy to understand how it connects to each other. And if we want to do more deep um, refactoring, this is very easy because now our unit tests are working so we can do even bigger refactoring. The last bit is the types and the sizes that we also need to move there. So now all the information relevant to manage the dialogues is in one file. We can do the same for the fulfillment. We make sure that our test cases work. And now we can make the same thing for the fulfillment. We create a new file called manage fulfillment and then we move everything into there. Now our order coffee file is so much readable and everything makes more sense. Handle fulfillment code hook as the main entry for our module. Now if we save, everything works. If we deploy this will work magically as well. We don't need even to test it. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or you would like to know more about unit tests or tests in general, or you would like to have that video about unit tests that I promised you before, leave it in the comment box below. That's the best way to get your voice heard and I make your request happen. In the next video, we are going to recognize a user and make predictions on what they would like to order in our coffee shop. So if you would like to know what will be happening, just subscribe to the channel to be notified of the next episode. And around here, you can see videos that YouTube are is suggesting for you for my channel. So go ahead and click it. And I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!